All right. Good morning, everyone. It's Monday morning after Mother's Day. And today I have a very special guest with me all the way from Baltimore, Maryland. Her name is Angelica. So welcome, Angelica. Thank you for joining me here today, my dear friend. Um, I will let Angelica introduce herself. So the floor is all yours, my dear. Thank you very much, Conchita. Hi, um, my name is Angelica. I've been friends with Conchita for quite some time. Maybe we've been friends for maybe five, 10 years, five to six years around that time. So I'm Angelica. I'm 48 years old. I'm here in Maryland, Baltimore, Nottingham, Maryland. Um, I am a registered nurse. I have a previous experience as an oncology nurse, but now I am working as a medical surgical nurse. Perfect. So uh, Conchita asked me to share my experience that we are going through. I can not believe and can't imagine that we will be on this same boat. On this situation that's right so but um anyway so without further ado so i how uh, i'm diagnosed i was diagnosed with stage 2b breast cancer i had my annual mammogram as i've always been doing since i was 38 years old oh wow okay november no, it was October 26 when I had my yearly mammogram. And they called me after a week to have it rechecked, like repeat. So I already had that gut feeling that something uh -huh. wasn't right. So I immediately said, okay, I will reschedule. I went back there. That was November 4. I did another one and it was still, you can see from the technicians, their faces, it's kind of suspicious. So after that procedure, they wanted to come back for a ultrasound guided biopsy. Mm -hmm. There, as a registered nurse, you know that they're trying to look I into some something yeah. deeper. Correct. Correct. So I... They asked me that their available slot is November 8th and November 11th. Just so happened that November 8th, I wasn't available and November 11th is my birthday. Oh. So I chose November 11th for my ultrasound guided biopsy. So November 11th, my November. birthday. And technically in, as in my heart, I considered it my diagnosis date. I diagnosed myself already on that day. So November 11, I went there for my ultrasound guided biopsy. And they said after the procedure, after that, they said, wait for maybe five to 10 days for the Result. report results. Uh -huh. so, so the official diagnosis date where the radio radiologist called me was November 16. So November 16, I received a phone call and said that the ultrasound biopsy was malignant. I, I remember I was at home. It was around, around this time, between 12, between 11 to one o'clock in the afternoon. When I received the call, my husband was home to, on his lunch break. The kids were home because they were done with their online school got the call and I I can't remember the exact words, but I, I knew what he was going to say anyway. So when I, oh, he said it was malignant. So when I hang up, I told my husband that I came back, it's cancer. That's, I, I stated the word cancer. And you can see from his face that he was not very excited about the yeah, news. You can see from his face. We sat in the cab, we're talking about it, and I think my kids heard 
we were talking about something uh-huh. and then they rushed down the stairs and said, is it about, is it the results, mom? Is it, a, what is it? So I told them, yeah, mama has cancer. And they said, they, they did mention the word death. And I said, nobody's dying at this time. Everybody's going to die, but not at this point. So everything will be okay. That's right. So, Angelica, that is, Angelica mm-hmm. how old are your kids? They are 18 and 19 right now. Okay. They're 18 and 19. So they, you can, it was a shock for of all of us. But for me, it was, I don't want to say I was expecting it, but the, the, when, when, when the fact that they wanted to do biopsy and more, I know. Yeah. Because history wise i wanted to say i'm among the on the mother side i'm the fifth um, family member i'm one of the fifth family member who already has breast cancer mm-hmm. i'm on the seventh who had cancer in the family just looking back oh, wow. i have two more cousins have history of cancer so all, all on the mother side mm-hmm. all on the mother side thyroid but five of five of us have breast two had thyroid the other one was a thyroid and the other one was slump i see so the it was how i processed the news was not as dramatic i guess i wasn't in tears not it was it wasn't as dramatic but it was like especially as I'm as a nurse like this is it I'm it correct I'm one of I'm one of your cancer patients yeah. now you are now a patient so what next I have boom 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 right there and then I know who I want I know what's my next step mm-hmm. and then another fun then from that time on that was November from that time on you, 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 my calendar, you, you got busy. My, my yeah. calendar was busy. Um, an hour, two hours after that, I got a call from my GYN and referred me to a surgical oncologist. And, and I was very happy, fortunate that that was also my preferred surgical oncologist. Okay. So I was diagnosed November. On your birthday. On my birthday. Mm-hmm. I... I saw my surgical oncologist the following week. It was fast. The following week. And, and after that week, I thought, oh, we were going to surgery and all. But no, after that surgical oncologist, pretty much things have slowed down. Uh-huh. Slowed down in a way that she wanted more tests. I thought, you know, you're diagnosed. Okay, let's get it out with the surgery and, and so on and so forth. But no, she said okay, you have this, let's do more tests. So I had two more MRIs. Oh, wow. A regular MRI and then another MRI, MRI yes. guided biopsy. Biopsy. Which that the other part, which I said that MRI guided biopsy was between my surgery, my actual surgery and that MRI guided surgery, I, I think I'd go for that actual surgery. So I had that MRI both. And the reason for that was to, I guess, confirm what kind of surgery do I have? What you need? Do I, uh, do uh-huh. I need? Okay. Between lumpectomy and mastectomy, of course, I'd prefer a lumpectomy. Okay. But of course, things will not always go on your way, on your side. So... And I'm, I'm glad that I've had those procedures before my mastectomy because after the second MRI guided biopsy, that was the only time that my surgeon said, we will really do a mastectomy instead of a lumpectomy because it was bigger than, I guess, than ultrasound. So there could be some changes from if you if there's a test, there was a change from my ultrasound and from my MRI. Yeah. In the in terms of size. 
there was a change from the size that was seen on the ultrasound and from the from the MRI. And I guess MRI is more accurate Precise, yeah. than, than ultrasound. Correct. So that was November. My surgery was January. So I waited two months because they said your, your tumor is not aggressive. So let's wait first. And then I actually, actually I bargained with my surgeon okay. that I've already made plans for December and for Christmas and New Year. Can we do it January next okay. year? She said, oh, absolutely. Yeah, we can talk about it. Just tell your doctor, let your doctor know. Yeah, we can negotiate about that. So that was the reason why December, although first week of December is my MRI. For, so for the rest of the week, I just enjoyed my Christmas and New Year. There you go. Just like, it's just like normal. I was even working. I went back to work. Okay. And then waited until January 4th. So January 4th my, my, was my surgery. During that time, Angelica, during that waiting period, were you, did you think about your diagnosis a lot? Was it? No. No. Very good. Actually, it was, um, no, it was just, it, I know it was there. I was diagnosed, but I didn't, I didn't really didn't think about it. I was working and I was, I was sharing it more. Actually, it's more of a venting. I was trying to uh -huh. share and talk about it with my colleagues, with my coworkers, with my friends that I'm, I was diagnosed. And this is probably the plan. But I wasn't like, oh, Correct. why? You didn't wallow. Or, yeah. uh huh. But it was, I, I, well, there was no symptom at all other than the mass, which I did not, um, how do you say? I, I wasn't able to palpate it myself. Oh, really? Or I wasn't able to feel it myself. Uh huh. You said earlier that you, you have already been doing mammograms when you were 38 years old correct in 38 because uh -huh. of my family history, history. okay mm -hmm. early okay but ever since then nothing has appeared unusual or you know how sometimes female breasts can be like highly dense or it's always highly dense okay since i was no i think i from 38 years old everything was clear and they already went out when I did had my when I had my first mammogram, the read, the technician already did say, oh, sometimes you'll get a note from us or you read, but don't worry, but it. it's not alarming. So every time I get the results from the mail, I will read it. Everything looks really good and positive. Okay. Twenty twenty, I really I look back on my previous results. That was the time that I noticed that they already put an indication that my breast was highly dense. But still, there was no any signs of malignancy. Got it. Because I compared the 2020 and 2021. And August 2020, I had my mammogram August 2020. So it was August, September, October, two months after that was the next, the following year, October 2021. And that was the one that I they saw it initially. So you've had your surgery, mastectomy, correct? Mm-hmm. One or two? One. One. Okay. And which side? Left. Left. All right. And you've also. I will. I will add to that mastectomy. So during the sur the surgical consult, we had a conversation between my husband and the surgeon that we will do it bilateral. Uh -huh. We will. I will have taken both out. But there's this conversation between the surgeon and my, the nurse educator and myself and my husband that we are back and forth. Are we going to do it or not? But we, we, I was certain I wanted to do it bilateral so I can get rid of it, get it done. I don't have to worry about the other side in uh -huh. the future. But as since, you know, there were like two months in between, I was talking with my relatives back and forth with my husband. And 
a lot of my relatives who had histories, they will really not encourage me to do bilateral. Why? No, I mean, my, my, my family was, it's up to you. That's what I mean. My family said, it's up to you if you want to do both. But it was my surgical oncologist said, the, uh, the right side is pretty good. There's nothing that we have seen. It's healthy. So let's not do bilateral. Let's do just left, left side. I said, no, we have, you know, um, I, I really want to get done, get it out of my thoughts or my brain that I'm, I will have to stop thinking. But on the day of the surgery, pre, pre-op, I was in that pre-op area. One more time, my surgical oncologist yeah. said, do you really want it both? Because if you are not 100% sure, I will glad to do just one. True enough, I, I changed my mind right there then. And that stretcher, I said, yeah, I think I am really not 100% sure about this anyway. So okay. that's how we ended up doing a left, just a left mastectomy. Got it, got it. What was the reaction of your husband? So I'm assuming when you went before, went prior to going into surgery, you he already knew that you were taking out both, right? Uh -huh. I told the surgeon, <laughs> after I signed the consent, uh -huh. I told her, Tell my I husband. said, doctor, after the surgery, will you just explain to him the reason why I changed my mind? She said, absolutely. Okay. I will definitely explain to, to him. And I talked to my husband. He said, what did, what did she tell you when, when she called you after the surgery? He said that um, we talked that um, she explained to me and my husband said, do you think she did the right decision? The doctor said, yes, she made the right decision. So from that point, I guess my husband got comfortable with the fact that, you know, it was a right decision for both of her, for me and the doctor also reinforced it. So he got pretty much comfortable. And when he saw me post all, he was fine. Perfect. So you, you, after the surgery, you went home with drains, right? From mm -hmm. the surgery site mm -hmm. and your family members were helping you out, taking care of those mm -hmm. stuff. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's, it's funny when you are in the medical field, especially in our end. And, and when your surgery is outpatient, uh -huh. because you know they were trying to really push you out of the door like okay you're <laughs> awake get up go on put your clothes uh -huh. on and bye-bye so they know that I was a, a nurse that I work in that hospital so I can I can I I, I was half awake half asleep I said are you okay I read said put your clothes on I said sure and then here's your discharge instructions and I heard my husband <laughs> Yeah, she's a nurse. Oh, well, then the more she, she knows about this. Oh and God. all I said was, okay, just, just put them in my bag because I know I have a drain. But the, the instructions, uh, as much as they wanted to probably do the discharge instructions and teachings with my husband, they will rely on, so, oh, you know this, okay, this is a drain, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> said, and then we moved on. You were discharged, sat in the stretcher, and then went home. And then when I, when I finally the next day or the day or the next that night that I have to drain, well, this is it. This is I have to teach my family this is how you do it. So can you just drain it? Because maybe after because I was thinking after a couple of days I can, but right now it was hard because it's under your yeah. mid-axillary area yeah. and you have to stretch your arms. So they were brave enough to to drain. Thank God it was only one. So they were, they were brave enough to do it and drain for myself. But then the next day and the, the next couple of days, I was fine. Except for the dressing. They had to help me with the dressing too. Oh, okay. Wow, well, very good. Very good. Mm -hmm. So for, for those of you who are watching and wondering what drain we're talking about, usually if a patient goes home um, after a procedure like that, a mastectomy, they... The surgeon would insert 
a tube and then at the end there, there's a bulb that sucks out all the extra fluids from the surgery site so that bulb needs to be drained <laughs> every so often so so angelica was able to put on the spot her boys they were able to be a a big help to mommy <laughs> right yes i i was really surprised that they even my husband because my husband is the, not a big fan of anything related to the hospital he's not but he made sure he was there and strong enough for 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 me yeah. for everybody very so good. kudos to them to, kudos, kudos to, them. to the husband mm -hmm. and the boys yes of course <laughs> very good um and then you recovered from surgery and you mm -hmm. had chemo correct i recovered uh yep yeah. And I have to see a medical oncologist. That's right. And that's how I know that there's chemotherapy involved. Okay. Which I do not like at first. Okay. I said, I am not going to do chemotherapy. I will do some alternative treatment except chemotherapy. Really? Okay. Yes. So and that was the initial chemo. conversation. Uh-huh. There was initial conversation and I said, I'll do anything except chemotherapy. What made you change your mind? So, what made me change my mind is my discernment. It's, I prayed hard. Very good. <laughs> I prayed hard and asked for the, uh, and solicited advice of course from my aunt who had their previous experiences of what is what am I supposed to do because uh -huh. I really do not want the chemotherapy okay. and I'd be honest I was also honest with my oncologist I said I really don't want chemotherapy and the reason why I'm doing this is I might regret it. Regret not doing it. Not doing it. And, okay. and she said that you're right. Because by the time I felt like, what if by the time I said, yes. all right, let's do this. You might say you, you were too late. So it's, it, it was like, a, um, yeah, okay, let's do it. Let's see what's going to happen. But it's, I'm not really 100%. Like, I wasn't, let's go for this. I'm excited. Let's kind of do this. Got but it. I was just with, with the help of prayers, everything. It, it just, let's do this. Perfect. So that oncologist came in after my post op follow up with my surgical oncologist. That was the time they told me that, yeah, you will really need have to have a, a chemo and radiation because there was a one lymph node involved. So there was a lymph node involvement. That's why they so really more. encourage. Mm -hmm, How many lymph that, nodes were taken out? They did not mention that to me. And they, I, so what happened was, I guess the, with the mastectomy before the surgery, they injected a dye. Uh -huh. So she said that dye will be through the lymph nodes if there's any involvement. So I guess from that dye, the, if they will find if there's any lymph nodes involved, they will have to remove it. So that dye was their indication of how many lymph nodes to be removed. Got it. So they only so took out one. They only took out one because they saw like a spot. Got it. And that's why I guess I didn't have any lymph edema because there was no, not a lot of lymph nodes removed. I see. So, yeah, that's the reason why they encouraged me to do chemotherapy and radiation therapy. So she said, um, go see a medical oncologist and um, discuss the plan. I see. 
So on top of that, the following week, January was busy for me. January, I have to see a radiation oncologist too at the end of January. And um, so my treatment for so during my visit with the medical oncologist, she told me that I need to have a port, which I said, okay, I agree. And I will have four cycles of doxytaxel and cytoxin or cyclophosphamide. Correct. I said, how many rounds or how many cycles? She said, um, we will do four cycles every three weeks. And I said, okay, I think that's, that's doable. So I agreed. And then, but you, uh, you will have to have your port inserted. I said, that's fine with me. So I had my port and radiation oncologist consult too. Okay. So all of, like every week I have that thing going on. So, so in this, the, the original plan was for you to get chemo every three weeks, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. Tell us what happened. So uh, February 8th was my first chemotherapy treatment. So I went there, got my chemo class, couple of days before that, got my port a week before that, got my booster shot a week before that. And that February 8th, I had an allergic reaction. So they gave me pre-medication, but my body was not taking that doxetaxel. It was um, not chest pain, but I say chest tightness and flush like redness yeah. all over my face it's flushed so they, they they we did finish that though I was given after the Zofran and dexamethasone I was given solumedrol steroids and steroids and then they have to they did rechallenge me it okay. had I, we waited and then they rechallenged so I got that first dose eventually after when they rechallenged me I was I did fine so, and then, so we waited for the third, for the next round, the next cycle. Again, back, they, get, they got my doxy, doxytaxel ready. Mm -hmm. But, oh, look, uh, I have to add one more of that. And another side effect of doxytaxel was uh, my liver enzymes were elevated. On the oh. second week, you know, I was doing my blood draw. Like I was given, I, was, I did a blood draw after a week. They noticed my liver enzymes How were triple. Were How high were they? It was so, say it, the normal was in the 20s, 25. I was in the 150s. It was, yeah, it was triple, quadruple. Oh, triple already. Okay. So mm -hmm. interestingly enough, I, so I just finished chemo last Saturday, right? My blood work prior to showed a uh, slight elevation of my liver enzyme. So I'm keeping mm -hmm. an eye on that too. And yes. I'm thinking it's the pills that I'm taking that are causing my liver enzymes to go up a little bit. Right. So, so that was the second week after the first dose. Yeah, so they said, why don't you come and we'll check it because your liver. So they did reject it, but on the before my third chemo, when they do when they drew my blood, my my liver enzymes were trending down. So they know that it was really the one of the chemo drug was affecting my liver. Okay. So that that's the reason why they were okay to resume my second cycle. Okay. Because that's fine. It was still elevated. It went down. It went up to one fifties, but then the, on the on the next cycle, it went down to like 75. To, it, okay. was, it was trending down. Trending so down. they said, it's okay. We can go ahead and do the second cycle because it's trending down and we know it's, it's the chemotherapy. But of course, it was alarming. Like, Correct. so, okay, if I'm going to do that again, so are we expecting to have my liver enzymes again elevated the following week? So, but they said, okay, well, we'll do it. It's trending down so we can go on with the second round. But this time with the second round, I had the same reaction considering they gave me a steroid. A bunch of yep, medicine. they gave me all the pre-medication antihistamine. I still, I had a reaction. This time it was, it was for me, I, I was more alarmed because I was having like a 
not shortness of breath, but I feel like my oh, airways starting up. to oh, tighten. Okay. That's scary. So that second round, the oncologist, medical oncologist really decided to stop. stop that infusion and don't give it anymore. We will try a different drug. Okay. But the back, bad part of it is that I have to do it weekly, which is the tax all. So, so you, the, you were switched from a different chemotherapy taxotere to a different drug called Taxol, and you have mm -hmm. to get that every week. Every week. Got it. Stay, still same, uh, still on the four, four cycles. It's just the frequency is more Got it. frequent. It's every week instead of every three weeks. Got it. So I was kind of upset because I said I was okay with every three weeks. Like I don't have every 21 days. I don't do coming here. Now I have to, have to be here every week. So again, I was thinking, what, how will my body cope? Like if I will mm -hmm. have weekly chemo, how will my body cope with it? Will I be more sick or what? So again, I, I just go there with positive attitude that this is gonna be okay. There you go. There's always, you know, if something happens and if not the way according to your plan, there will always be another opportunity that opens for me. So I went with the I went with the flow. Let's do this every week. Uh, on the third week of my first dose, we, I'm just gonna say about the side effect. That is where I notice my hair starts to fall. That was when I said, oh, it's because I was expecting actually I thought it was the first round. If I get the first dose, maybe the next day if I wake up all my hairs will be gone, but it's three weeks after the first dose. I oh. noticed my hair starting to fall. Was it coming said, out in clumps? Yes. Oh. Because I, you can, the minute I see like there's some bald spot here, a bald spot there. Initially, my husband said, no, let's just leave it that way. It's going to grow. And I, mm, I don't think it's going to grow. But <laughs> finally, when... It? One day when okay. yes, one day when when I woke up in the morning when he saw that I really had bald spots everywhere, he said, "Yeah, I think it's funny." And he did say that I was still in denial at the time, but this time I think we're ready. That uh -huh. that hair needs to come off. So the third week, so finally he said that that we shaved it here at home. Again, there was no drama. It was okay. more of an excitement. I love you, Angelica. Finally, there's no <laughs> drama. Time for me Let's to buy go. wings. <laughs> Let's do this. I was really, and, and this is the truth. I was really more excited. Like, Let's do this. Okay. Let's, let's take this out so I can, I can see how it looks like on me. Uh-huh. And then I know I can get a hat, a cap, a wig, and I can put on. So let's, let's do this. So we shaved it. <laughs> And the biggest, um, the most flattering words that I've heard from my husband's mouth uh -huh. was that after he shaved my hair, my hair, he said, "You look beautiful with your head." And I think that was, it was just like saying, "You are beautiful without it." Oh. So it's and because he, he said, "Your hair, your head." is perfectly shaped and I said it is and I, when I looked at the mirror I said it is really perfectly shaped <laughs> I did love I do love my hair oh that is and so I'm not sweet. even and I'm comfortable actually and I, I I am comfortable I went out one day I will I will go walking without a hair oh, I go out huh? walking I'm that's comfortable good. with it that's very if, good. between a cap and being bald I'd rather do that because I said I even look sick with a with a scarf or uh -huh. cap. Either that or the hair. And the reason why I just put cap because it's cold. Mm -hmm. If you don't have hair, you tend to <laughs> feel cold. It is. It is really cold. <laughs> so I tend to. That's the reason why I just put a, a cap or a scarf. Got it. Because I'm cold without my hair. But I am really comfortable being bald. 
I love that. No, oh, thank you for sharing yeah. that. Yeah. No, you know, some people, um, some of our patients would would use you know, cold cup therapy just to save mm -hmm. their hair. So I mm -hmm. guess everyone will have their own preference, but mm -hmm. I'm glad that you're very comfortable with yeah hair or no. I am hair. really comfortable with it. <laughs> very good. Um, what else? So your when was your last chemo again? Uh, May third was my last chemotherapy. All right. Any side of lingering side effects that you want? No, I'm really surprised. Other than the alopecia, which is the hair loss, uh -huh. I do not have any nausea, no vomiting. Not, nothing with my taste buds, thank God. I mean, oh, yes, really? yes, yes, a dough. Because <laughs> I think the only free. side, my, 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 the <laughs> PA asks, any side effects? Yeah, um, increase in appetite. So for me, that's, that's a side effect for me. Increase in appetite. I didn't like that thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, my, about, my taste um, buds are good. Neuropathies, no neuropathies mm -hmm. from, no, good. I think, I don't know, does that still have? Yeah, yeah. If you if you get it for a long, long time, that's oh, okay. one of their so, side effects. For okay, sure. so I guess because we I only had four cycles. Yeah, but yeah. Don't have any neuropathy. Um, they said about the chemo brain. Yeah, a little. I mean, you, I guess because I'm not working and you know you're you know in the hospital feel like correct. I you tend to forget what's her name or you know, but yeah. I, I still have, I probably have like my, my memory is kind of slow, but not that bad. <laughs> so you're, you're on medical leave, right? Uh, when I do you expect am. to go back to work? I, so next, this month, May 23rd, or after May 18 will be my simulation for radiation. Okay. So I'm thinking the week, May 23rd is Monday. I don't know if my oncologist will say, okay, let's start this Monday or let's start the Friday. I will have a conversation with a doctor, with a radiation oncologist, what they would recommend. If they will tell me, okay, you pretty much can go back to work. Okay. But my only issue is the treatment daily because I have to go for daily treatment. So I will have, it's a conversation that my, I will have to do with my radiation oncologist. Plus I have, you know, every two months, I still have more, Test. I still have appointments to, to be, yeah. to, to, to see the doctor. I have my, my um, primary doctor that I will have to see at least this May. In two months, I just have to follow up. So I have more, a lot of doctor's appointments, but um, I think I can be on leave until July. So I started, I was out of work from January, starting January, according to the, you know, leave people that I was talking to. <laughs> we, I, I think I have July. Okay. I don't intend to be out till July. I don't know. I will see how I feel after radiation. Correct. Do you already I know? Do you already know how many radiation days you're going to go for? 30, 30 rounds. So that's oh, 30. 60, six weeks. Yeah. So it's every day. So six I weeks. I suggest you go to for that July, July something return. Six weeks. Um, yeah. But yeah, we will see how, how yeah. it goes. Because the thing with radiation. Have things that, to go. Uh -huh. No, I'm just no, kidding. With radiation, you, you feel okay the first few weeks. It's towards the end of the treatment that you will feel the side effects of it. That's what they said. That's what yeah. the physician assistant said. It's the accumulated Correct. treatments that's probably going to make you, going to make you More fatigue. weak. Yeah. And some, uh, even my chemo infusion nurse says, if you feel dehydrated too, just let us know schedule we can even give you some infusion so yeah. it's it's I, I i cannot say when will i really go back to work got it because of the radiation i have to i have to see first how as, as i said if the chemo if the radiation treatment will be like chemo that i was pretty much less no side effects not even 
nausea, vomiting, or whatever. I think I, I physically, I can probably go back to work, but not 100%. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. I was telling my, my coworkers, if I do go back to work, I will have to be introduced slowly because I cannot function like 100%, like Correct. the way you're expecting me to do. Got it. Got it. Because you, you do a lot of bedside and you're on the mm -hmm. what, orthopedic, no? Yeah. Yep. That's so it's hard. Things. It's a lot of lifting and and plus it's a fast pace. And as right. I said, my I'm kind of slow right now. So I have to <laughs> start from, I will probably be on orientation. I know I will be on orientation because it's just got a whole lot of things to do again that, got it. Got you it. know, processing it, it's going to be hard. Are you doing 12, 12 hour shifts? 12 hour shifts. And then are you still nights? Yes. Girlfriend. Okay. So that's what I'm also thinking. I don't think I will have to do night shift again. So. But it's day just, shift is also. Day shift nursing workload is hard. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more activities right. going on. During True. The day. So. Well, so it's hard you, will, you, you know what enough. you know what's the thing with having diagnosed with cancer and you're having on on a treatment it's hard to plan yeah you cannot plan it ahead because it's normally it will not go the way you want it to be got it so i'll play by ear so at this time I'm off for two weeks until the 18th. Okay. And I'll, I'll go. So what through have there. you been doing? What have you been doing lately, my dear um, friend? So, <laughs> the normal stuff. I make sure that I am on my routine. I have to exercise at least three times a week. Okay. I have to do that. <laughs> I have to do that. Otherwise, I'm cranky. Okay. So this past few days, it's been raining here. I feel like mm, I didn't move at all. I'm cranky. I have to, and even my joints, you know, I know I have already some joint issues, but I feel like the more I don't move, the more that joint will really hurt me. So actually this morning, I was able to go out. This was nice and sunny. I was able to do exercise. I make sure on top of it. And, you know, it's our education to our patients. Fatigue. Even your fatigue, you still have to exercise. Correct. You have got to move because the more you don't move, yeah. it's just going to, I have it there. So even after surgery, I just had to get up and get up and walk. And walk. So that's, that's part of it. You know, now that I have all my time off, <laughs> all the house chores in the world, <laughs> all the house chores in the world that you have been postponing, you have all the time. You get no excuse, girlfriend. Yeah, I have, have an excuse. No excuse at all. <laughs> and I am, I, I am, I'm enjoying it. Like there you I go. have this stuff. I, this is the, I know I wanted to do this and I haven't done it. I have I all the time in the world to do it. Even when I get, I have to share this because one day I had this experience. I was because even before when I was working, I have to walk uh -huh. the, in the morning even if I'm working at night I have to walk in the morning before I go to, before I take a nap I walk usually an hour so one there's this one day I said I, I'm, I'm taking walks nice sun I want to have that um sunshine so I was walking and I felt that like cool breeze on my face it's uh -huh. a spring yeah so it's just like oh. and at that moment I said this is the this is the moment that I've been actually wanting and wishing for that there should be one day that I am not in a hurry. That one day I wish there's one day that I'll just do whatever I want and not yeah. think of what's after this, I got to do this hundred things to do after yeah. I walk. So that moment when I was walking and I feel like, thank God I can walk. As uh -huh. long as I want and I can finish this walk and I can get home and then when I get home I don't have to rush that I have to take a shower to take a nap because after this I have to 
do the do, cook and take a nap because at night I have to go back. I have to go to work. Yeah. That day I felt like this is the moment that I was thank you that I was granted this wish. I felt it in my heart that when I get home, I take a shower, I have and I still have all the rest of my day for me. Not thinking that I'm going to work. Girlfriend. Sige na nga. I would is. also walk and enjoy the moment exactly. the free time that I have. Oh my gosh, that you is have, such it, a good perspective. No, that's so true because, you know, mothers were always rushing. Mm-hmm. Right? We're and always that was me. like, doom, 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 doom. we have, plus the fact that, especially me, I, I work in the morning and in, in, at night. Right. So you're expected you to, to in the morning, you have to do you got to do things. Well, anyway, you're, you're still going to work at night. because So you still have this part of the day yeah. that you have to function. As much right. as I just want to lay down in bed, but I can't. So that, I said, I really, I, I don't know. I, this time I'm getting dramatic, right? <laughs> but it, it, that's really true. Like, oh. No, we're entitled. We, 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 we can be dramatic from time yeah. to time. So that <laughs> we're was allowed. The, um, yeah. Oh, Angelica, that's a very good insight. Yes. I like that. I like that. Yeah, you, you just enjoy the moment. Connecting to that. So what am I grateful for? And what have lessons I've learned? I am, I don't want to say I'm very spiritual. All I know is I pray every day. I pray. I go to church when I'm not working. I'm, I'm guilty of that when I'm working. I go to church. I pray, I say thank you, and grateful for everything. So I thought that was it. I thought, I think I'm, as a, as a Christian, I think I've done my part. But when things like this happen, uh-huh. some, you question like, did I do, am, am I being punished? Oh. Did I do, what did I do wrong? Okay. So I'm grateful. Actually, when I pray right now, right now I say, I'm say thank you for, for this cancer that I have yeah because it has now it has opened everything to me that life is not really about you have this you went to this place you're eating this one you have this kind of shoe this kind of clothes uh, yeah it's right. about it's about that moment that I was saying all I need is just a time for myself and for my family and that was that was enough I'm, I'm not wanting to do anything now. that's right I'm grateful for the time that all that that I can spend my, and I thought I will be bored uh-huh never a moment I was I, never bored that's the truth I'm never glad. I'm glad I said I will be out what will I do here? Never. Oh. Am, am I am I asking for anything? No. I'm contented even with cancer. Wow. Mm-hmm. Angelica. <laughs> I am. So it is. <laughs> okay. And it's I think. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't know what to say now. Oh my gosh, you put me on the spot. <laughs> oh, and then driving force. Another, I, I was reading your yeah. text with me. <laughs> this is another insight. Actually, I just I was just thinking about it. I said, I really don't have a force. Hmm. I'm not that strong enough. I have I have drive because I want to live for my family. Correct. Do I have a force? I I don't have any force against cancer. Hmm. Am I fighting? Why will I fight? This cancer is bigger than I am. Hmm. So I am, are we in a war? I don't want to be in a war. Mm -hmm. Let's make love, not war. Whoa. So I said, I said, I think I want to rephrase this question. It's my drive is for my family. My, I am, I am a, we are a gentle warrior. This disease is not, I'm not in war with you, but I will 
you will be with me. I'm going to tag you along. Because if I win this battle, you're with me. Yeah. Then I guess you want to win with me, right? Yeah. Cancer? That's right. <laughs> Come on, tag along with me. So I'm not fighting. I'm not fighting this cancer. I will not fight with you. I don't have even the energy. And I will not waste my yeah. energy fighting you. Just come along with me. Let's let's do this journey together. Wow. So I don't want to say I'm I'm fighting this battle. I don't want I don't want any battle anymore. Yeah. I'm tired. So just let's just be friends. And let's go <laughs> with this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, let's, let's, let's be friends. I will have to internalize that statement. Yes. <laughs> so I just, I just, no, I just realized it when I was reading. I said, huh, "This question is hard." I know, so right? I, said, I really, I really don't have. I'm, I, I, I'm not. That's, I'm just, and I did tell my my coworkers, "I don't want chemo. I'll be ugly. Um, my hair, and then." This cancer is going to be with me. No, I'm, I'm going to fight this cancer because this cancer is in my body. If I go, then this cancer is going to go. So I guess this cancer doesn't want to go. He's going to stay. Then I will stay. Hmm. So, so I, I wanted to say I'm not fighting. It's not because I'm giving up. Correct. But Correct. There you go. It's just let's just be friends cancer be nice to me please be nice to me but you cannot cross this line here you're over there do that <laughs> if you cross though well i'll cross the bridge when i get there that's right oh my gosh angelica you are um, okay you have a lot of insight my goodness and mm -hmm. i i love the words that are coming out of your mouth they're so See, that's Encouraging. what time that that's what time can do to you <laughs> from January <laughs> to May. Yeah. No, and and I hope that once I post this in YouTube and whoever gets to watch this segment, what two years from now, five years from now, many years from now, you know, people who are newly diagnosed and and you know, it's a lot of emotions to take, but hopefully this session, especially the words coming from this woman here, will encourage everyone. It's not me. I don't know, it's not me, I guess. It's the it Lord is. Me. Thank you. Yes, it is. Because Thank you. Know, you've been praying and God has heard your prayer and all he's doing right now is just giving mm -hmm. you a lot of love, a lot of peace, a lot of comfort, and it's just flowing through your mouth. So it's that what do it i goes. what do i what 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 does what was the word that you mentioned what do i want <laughs> to do to do uh-huh before you go back to work Is before that i go back I, to yeah. work of course i want to i want to see my family that's okay. that's the one big thing family where in the philippines in the philippines okay. yeah because i don't have my parents and everybody's there Whoever says just my aunt's uncle, but my immediate family, my brothers and sisters, my in-laws, everything. Yeah, everybody's in the Philippines. So of course that's my main goal. If not, I want them to come over here. Yeah. But anyway, that's and that's it. Well, hopefully that gets to happen. Soon. Yes. That's that's one thing that I would want to happen. And another thing, be a patient advocate. Be a maybe patient, a, you know. Maybe that's a job a description patient. that you can do <laughs> to take you it away was. from bedside nursing. <laughs> I know it was. I don't oh. know if they still have it. It was. We usually have it. We usually uh -huh. are a patient advocate. Well, maybe it's just so a different title. That somewhere. is my. That is what I want. Got it. If I am still here. Yeah, I will, we'll, we will still be here. You will be. You will be. Is there anything else? Okay, we're... That was Many a good chat. Yeah, we have was? a good chat. Amazing. Is there anything you would like to share to people out there who have been recently, who are recently, who are going through 
cancer through a cancer diagnosis is there any you know i i know you've shared a lot of, of insights already but is there anything else you would like to speak i want to share i think i want to quote you i think that i read it from one of your posts about being strong because that's the only thing you have something like that oh and being strong will and usually it really comes out naturally once we are diagnosed that's either it's a fight or a flight uh-huh isn't it that once you're yeah. diagnosed it will just first thing that you have to do it like i'll have to what what next what am i gonna supposed to do and that is being strong-willed and you want to go through this and we are strong as i said it comes up and naturally but mm -hmm. being strong is just there correct and every and my one of my co-workers said you are strong angelica for for just taking this just you were diagnosed i said because what am i what am i supposed to do mm. Isn't it? You have to, I have to accept it and acceptance. Acceptance right now here at home, my husband, my two children, we're in a point now that there's acceptance. That's good. There's a, we're already on that level of we accepted it. Your mom, you have cancer, you're going on to treatment. Even when, when my wig is sitting there, air drying, kids will see it. I know that they're at that point that it's already so natural to them to see a wig sitting there. Uh -huh. You know, it's not like, oh, what's this mom? It's not like they see, yeah. they see that wigs and all, oh, and they see me without hair sometimes. It's, it's there, it's already, we're on that state of, we already accept it. And again, my husband said, that is the reason why we are, it's easy for us to move on because we've accepted it. Whatever's can happen, or we have to just accept it because that's the only way that we'll, we can move on. Move, move on. If not, it gets harder. It is. Right? It gets harder, yeah. It gets harder. Yeah, we always have a choice on how to, whenever life throws us uh, mm -hmm. a big situation, we. We always have a choice on how to respond. So. Try to read on your previous post. It was there. Like it, it <laughs> is only it is only what I have to be strong. Something like that. Oh, Something really? that essence. Uh -huh. oh, that is a, it is true. Like you know, sometimes you don't have anything, but that strength is there. So I, I'm holding on to this. It's the That's only true. thing I have. This is I'm That's gonna hold on to. I'm gonna throw you your questions. Last one. What? I hope I have chocolate, an answer. Chocolate, white, <laughs> <laughs> chocolate, white, or sex? Chocolate or sex? Can I have both? Answer that honestly, I'm not, I'm, honestly, I don't, I'm not a big fan of chocolate, so <laughs> that's my answer. I like that. <laughs> not a big fan of chocolate, so. Okay. Okay, thank you. And so make you fat. <laughs> oh, Angelica. Hi. It was oh, nice it's... talking to yeah, you. Yeah, thank you for, it took us forever to do this because I am technologically challenged, but I actually want to thank Danielle Kashner. She was the one. Oh, who, she was the one. Who told me about what you were going through. So Danny. Danny, thank, thank you. Me. Thank you. I love her so much. Yep. Yeah, yeah. She's always there for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you, Miss Danny. Thank for you. Connecting Angelica and I. So, my, de my dear, all the best. Thank keep you. And you, same to you. Yes, ma'am. We'll keep in touch. Yes, ma'am. We're both belated, gentle warriors. Belated, belated, belated happy Mom's Day and uh, no, oh, that's right. Happy Nurses Week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Regards to your family. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Angelica. Thank you, Conchita. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right. Thank you.